Hey guys, got about a week's worth of growth and it needs to be cut off and the work has just been going and I finally just had to stop and say let's get this done and let's take a moment, enjoy it and all that stuff. We'll be using the lather bowl I've been using a lot lately, Dollar Tree Melamine Bowl with epoxied glass beads also from the Dollar Tree decorator glass beads at the bottom for uh, lather agitation as well as to just hold the brush and keep it from sinking all the way down into the suds. And then uh, speaking of the brush, I'm going to be using, continuing on with this uh, bore brush. We call it the Moore Bore, the uh, B35 from Zenith that our little shaving group uh, went shaving over on Reddit. Uh, we got this special handle color, chose it specially, and we got a little engraving there done uh, for our group. You can do that too if you get up enough people. Um, and because it was such a challenge to actually make happen, most uh, customizations like this don't require nearly as much work. But as it turns out, there were regulations on animal hairs coming across the pond to the United States and things like that because uh, the zenith is in Italy. And that was such a headache. And the guys just went through it. The organizers of it just, they bit off more than they can chew. And Sterling came along and really helped us out. Rod at Sterling, he renewed his license to be able to bring these back over. He then acted as a forwarding point for the United States folks, that sort of thing. So to say thank you, many of us for March have used a lot of Sterling products. And I just kind of got my momentum going. And even though it's after the middle of April now, I'm still using Sterling. And it just so happens that the other items today, uh, the razor and the soap here, and the splash were provided by Buzz, a friend, a viewer here on, uh, on the channel. And I, I'm just so grateful. And I used Ben Franklin just the other day, uh, last week when I, when I shaved. And he also sent the uh, Henson razor for me to try out. And it's really been a neat blessing. And I'll, I'll talk more about that. And the Kai Blade... This is one that I've had before, but when he sent all this cool stuff to me, he put a few blade tucks in there as well. Very generous of him because they were feathers and kais, and those are some of the most expensive blades out there. And, I, and just in case he likes to use the kais in the Henson, I'm gonna, uh, I grabbed a kai out of my own um, blade inventory. And let's go ahead and put it in the razor. So this is the aluminum Henson. Uh, this one has no writing on the bottom of the base plate, but it does have some writing on that surface, the top of the base plate. It's got a plus plus there and then a lot number. And, uh, and those are really the only identifying marks that it has. I think AL13 or something like that is the designation that the current website for Henson shows as the current razor. This is the Kai blade and it's one of the few that has zero ink or laser etching on it. It is, is this the one? I believe it is. It's, it's just a little bit wider in this direction than most other blades. And so that will often give it just a little bit more exposure. If you have a razor and it's very mild for you, and you don't really have the ability to buy another razor and you want to have some more aggression, then you could buy a tuck of Kai blades and see if they will help you out, give you a different experience. So I had a, a nice comfortable shave previously. It took down a few days of growth without a problem in three passes. Just like many mild razors, the second pass had to do more work but still so much was accomplished that by the third pass, it was still just let's pick up a few extra hairs. And so I didn't need anything more aggressive. I didn't need any more passes or anything like that. So the agar was one that he uh, sent to me, uh, Buzz did. And oh, this is just one of my 
one of my favorites. I put a little bit of the splash on my wrists when I was going out one day and, and I, I, maybe it was because I was eating and you know when you put it on your wrist you don't go nose blind to it as easily and so you may not smell it when your hands are down or you're walking and then you'll put your hands up to talk on your phone or to think about something you know or, or wave them around and then all of a sudden that cool scent that you put on is now is now talking to you again and I love doing that and agar is one of those it's it's classy uh I interpret it as, as pretty masculine. It's, it's, it's complex, but it's really simple. It's not, it's hard to put in a certain category, almost like a kind of a, a resinous, icky wood, you know, kind of thing, dank, dark wood, but kind of a sharpness to it as well. And it, it, because of those types, uh, oud is, I think agar and oud are almost synonymous. And oud is a, if you know anything about shaving and these soaps that we have, uh, it, oud is so often in different men's fragrances. And for good reason, just because this is terrific. So I just love the agar. The, if you have a bunch of splashes or colognes that you like to use and you just want to maybe limit yourself to one kind of soap, agar might be a good choice if you, you know, if you do like it because it's going to go with so many different splashes. You know, I've got City Slicker here, and this is the agar that uh, Buzz sent me. And I've got uh, Clubman Brandy Spice right here. I guarantee you the agar would go well with that. The uh, Pre de Provence number 63 is a nice smoky scent. Guarantee you agar, again, would go really well with that. And so, you, either from the soap's perspective with it being something that's so flexible that can handle many different kinds of uh, post-shave products, either that way or switching it around and taking the agar splash and then having a number of soaps that you use with the one splash. Either way, this kind of scent's very flexible in your collection if you want to do that or if your funds require that you do something like that. Have this on hand, maybe a couple others, maybe lavender might be a good balance because if the if it's too light maybe to, to let the agar help it out, then lavender, you know, might help it out. So that's a that's some some a way that you can kind of work with scents and get kind of maximize your, your benefits there. So the agar, I'm looking forward to this shave because of that scent. My brush. Uh, I think it's been soaking about 10 minutes now. Not as long as I usually soak it, but that's all right. It's good to try it at different points, right? And I'm going to wash my face now. I have a little sample. This is what I do with the Sterling soap samples. They actually come twice as big as this. Um, I've got the plastic right here. This is the bath soap sample. And actually, this is the one it came in. You see, so it's twice as big. But I find that if I just take it out of here, and it usually is about this thick actually. I've used this enough to where it's, it's divided in half by now. Um, if I just take the, the slice that they give me and I use it in the bath and all that stuff, then it usually breaks in the middle. And so what I do is I cut it, try to cut it exactly in half. I wet both halves and then I stick them together and I let them cure. And then they form one sample that's thicker but more narrow. And then this lasts me a nice long time in the, in the shower. Today it's going to be my get rid of the oils on my, on my beard right before the shave so that it improves my lather. With that done, we can take the soaked brush, shake most of the water out. I like to leave maybe a third of the water in. Call it lightly wet. That's what I think maybe is a good descriptor. I could shake out more droplets right now, but looks about right. And in plus or minus, this is usually still in good shape. You're still not overly wet so that it inhibits your absorption of the soap, but it's also not over, you're not going to be overly dry in that it, uh, that also can inhibit and prevent the soap from being pick, picked up from the uh, from the tub here. So agar. Oh man, that's just so good. I'm going to position my lather bowl 
right below this point right here. So if you see me move the soap to that point, it's because any excess I want to drop into the lather bowl. So let's do a 15 second load, 12 second load right there. We'll start. And so that means we'll cut off at 22 for a 12 second load, just lightly pressing. And there we go. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like a lot of time. And also, you know, this was pretty much a dry soap. I, I did not detect that, you know, Buzz had used it recently. And so it wasn't, as I take some of the stuff that was around the sides. And 12 seconds with, especially with this brush, it's got a lot of backbone. It does have soft tips, but it has a lot of backbone. And so that can definitely shorten your load time if you have brushes like that. Synthetic brushes also sometimes have a lot of backbone. I like more plush, luxurious brushes. That's what I think of as luxurious. And so... Most of my brushes, I might have to add another five seconds if I were to take another brush and do that same load. All right, very good. So we just didn't really have very much soap wasted at all there. I didn't even need to let it drip into the bowl. And here we go. I was a little concerned that the length of time that I was able to soak with it being shorter than usual wouldn't give me enough softness. I wouldn't enjoy the brush as much because there wouldn't be as much tip, so tip softness as I usually have, but I, the way it feels in the bowl here, the way the tips are moving around, what is it? Maybe the bottom, the, the top 60% of the bristles are fairly easy to splay. The core here is still gonna be pretty firm and this brush really because of the sheer number of bristles and all that it really may never have a, a have a, an average amount of backbone it may always have more than that and that's okay as long as we've got a good bit toward the end of the tips the end of the bristles that does relax and splay easily and give you that softness. Indeed, it might be a unique brush because so many of my other ones have the medium or even less backbone at the core. And so this, this will be a welcome experiment to play around with as, as it ages, to watch what happens as the, as the center probably stays pretty immovable just because the sheer number of bristles there and and then we watch as the as the tips keep splitting and as they are able to then flex more things like that 15 to 20 milliliters of water is usually what it's been taking since i've kept the brush constant my soaps are pretty constant because i'm using a different sterling soap each shave and so that means they're all pretty much dry. So that's a constant. And if the brush is a constant, the water's, uh, the uh, load time is constant, and the soap condition, the moisture of it when you load, if that's a constant as well, that usually amounts to the last variable being fairly constant also. I'll put in maybe 16 or 17 milliliters there. We'll just see where it lands. Some people, they take my measuring and they think I'm, it's prescriptive measuring where I'm only wanting to put in a certain amount and that's never the way it is, unless I'm doing a little scientific experiment, but that's almost never what I'm doing with the water. I just record what I use to report it to you guys. Because just recently, I answered a post on a guy who was having trouble with his lathers. He would, it would look okay in the bowl, he would take it to his face and it, would, it was a synthetic brush. Uh, he had the main brushes that he had were synthetic and the lather would just die. It would just, he called it being sucked up into the brush. I don't have a lot of 
synthetic experience because almost all of them have too much backbone for me. And so I don't prefer the synthetic brushes. But they are good for a lot of guys. The mother load's super soft. I do like that one. Even the most, almost all the synthetic tips are very soft. It's just those, the shaft of the bristles that is very springy, has a lot of flick and bounce and um, backbone. And that's a terrific looking lather. So again, consistency comes, uh, comes to us. Because all those variables I told you were consistent, then the water turned out to be pretty close as well. And obviously when you change something, then yeah, you might have to adjust your, your criteria and where you stop, that sort of thing. All right. I could add more water to this if I wanted to. But because I've got this long beard here, I'm going to especially in the first pass, maybe let it be a little drier than usual because those oils, there's probably still a little bit of oil on my skin. And working with the stubble at such a length, I uh, just like a, a drier lather. And when I say dry, that's a relative term. It's not dry. It's still quite wet, but it's drier than where I might normally take it. So Buzz, thank you so much. This agar, mm, that is nice. I researched the Henson. I used it one time, you know, last week. I've used it once so far. And I, I, I kind of noted in that video my discoveries and observations. And then later that day, somebody jumped online and asked about the Henson. So I was able to help them out. So Buzz is able to help out some, some random shavers indirectly by providing me with a Henson, a razor I had never shaved with before. And uh, while the, the Henson razor here may not be one I stick with a lot, and I say that even with an amount of uncertainty because, you know, can't judge a razor after just one shave. I, I might switch around and use it a few more times and decide I'm never going to shave with anything else. You never know. But if I, if I do pass on it, then uh, what I did learn about my, the research that I did to, uh, to answer the other person's questions about Henson, I learned that while the razor may not be uh, a match for my own shaving style and preferences, I did really like what the company was doing to sell the razor. We have plenty of examples of companies like Vikings Blade, for instance, who throw a bunch of hype, get their marketing department going, tell you stories about manliness and all that. And then they are trying to sell you a, a Zamac razor, a pot metal razor at the price point of almost something like this. This is a machined aluminum razor. It's not going to corrode or rust. And so, you know, companies like Vikings Blade are inflating the price of a, sometimes a Bai Li type razor. I mean, it, just you can't distinguish it between a Chinese version, same seam marks and everything. And, uh, and they're trying to charge you higher prices for it. But Henson wasn't doing that. I think I looked and maybe this was $59, $69, something around there for a pure aluminum razor here. Now, at the connector point where the handle screws in, last video I showed you, there is a different colored surface there, a different shine. Maybe it's shined aluminum where the rest is kind of just the matte color. And so maybe it's still aluminum. But I could see how, since that's a tension point where there's some abrasion, they may have put another 
uh, metal in there to prevent the galling when metals join that kind of thing and so that's you know that's no big deal I'm sure that's not pot metal and rinse now and with the mixture I've put together here we're talking a it's not a strong scent it's four or five out of ten in terms of scent strength for me Oh yeah, that brush feels good. See, now we can kind of think of the tips, analyze the softness now that we've cut down a lot of the growth. And that's a soft brush. I am using a hairdryer method to break it in. Uh, between shaves, usually after a shave, I will take the hairdryer, set it on either warm and low or cool and high. And I will treat just the tips with the hairdryer and uh, I won't uh, treat them so much that they get crispy and super dry. But just that much, and it really seems to accelerate the growth. And I hope, this is unproven, but this is kind of my test run. I hope it doesn't have any kind of future negative effects of maybe being too harsh on the tips. I don't think so, because I'm trying to be very careful. Because otherwise it would take a little while for this to break in. And with this one having so much backbone, I, I wanted to go ahead and try something. And uh, SpongeBob on Reddit had really good things to say about his hairdryer method. Much of what I do is, is taken from him. We'll go cross grain now. Oh, and so I, I thought that Henson was putting out a... A product at a fair price and that's not something that in my opinion Vikings Blade does. I mean can you imagine paying 50 or 60 dollars for a, a Zamac razor that if you don't really take good care of it and we've seen them uh, if you don't take good care of it then we've seen them break in a year Because the Zamac, the plating wears in a certain spot where maybe it has a lot of uh, friction, like a twist mechanism or something like that. And then once the Zamac underneath is exposed, it's a very short time before breakage happens because that Zamac just can't handle water. And now I'm cool with places like Maggard Razors and By Lee selling Zamac Razors for, and this is something I talk about on my channel a good bit, so you old hats already know this. And see, already I've got this tremendous shave. This is an effective tool. It works well. It's comfortable. Because, well, let me finish my other thought. Um, so, you know, By Lee or Maggard, see, they charge you reasonable prices and low prices for those Zamac products. And so you may buy a razor for $12 or $8 or something like that. Or Maggard might cost you $20, but that's just because it's a few dollars for the head and the most of the money is going for the stainless steel handle that you get from Maggard razors. So the head will eventually die, but you can just unscrew it buy a new head for a few dollars, put it on your stainless steel handle, or if you go the eBay route, and or if you find some used vintage Gillette heads, like a tech head or something like that, old type, all those will fit on those maggard handles. You can just keep on going. And so that's okay. You're getting a cheap product, but they're only charging you a cheap price, whereas Vikings Blade is the other way around. They're charging you a high price for a cheap product. I will clarify that my meaning here is just to educate people about that type of product and that type of business. If you still look at Vikings Blade, you look at a razor that they have, and you decide that uh, you like it, and you even maybe you even got gifted it, and you like it and enjoy it, then that's great. I just want you to be informed that they're probably a little bit overpriced, and so if you can, if you or have the choice to choose, then you have that informed decision. That's all I'm talking about. Um, I, although I do hate for when people mark up something and then they take advantage of shavers, you know, with a story that's kind of deceptive. Um, but I just want to, um, let people be aware, but Henson, not like that. Fair prices. Uh, you can get a hundred pack of blades on the Henson website. 
it's kind of a, a no name, maybe Chinese brand or something like that, but they're charging you a reasonable price of somewhere around eight or nine dollars. But if you go to Vikings Blade, they've put their own private label name on it, and I'm sure it's a, a similar cheap Chinese blade. Uh, and it costs uh, $12 or $14 for 50. So you're paying basically four times as much, approximately, for 100 blades over at Vikings Blade than you are at Henson. And so I think Henson's doing it right. I don't feel fleeced at Henson's when I was looking at their website. So, uh, so there are some things about the company that I really did enjoy. The plus or minus about this razor, it's a pro and a con at the same time. The blade here, you can see the shape. It's a trapezoid. And one of the facets here is this flat here. And then, of course, you have a matching one on the other side. And somewhere in the middle there, the blade extends out. And so the plus is that it's hard to cut yourself because you don't have a lot of exposure. And if you don't get the angle right, you're not going to cut anything, but you're also not going to cut yourself. And so it's... Uh, so that's a, a pro for people who need that. But it's kind of a minus for people who might want to do razor stunts. We'll call it that. Where maybe you sometimes you can ride the cap on a razor and it changes the razor's, uh, the razor blade. It changes its angle to your skin. You can't really do that because they've locked in the angle here. If you lifted anything to ride the cap, the blade is no longer touching your skin very much at all. And so you're pretty much uh, stuck with whatever setting they have decided to put, the, which I think is a 30 degree. And that is a good setting. Most people do shave at that angle. And so, but that's the con. Um, and, and the con with it having this flat side, the con is you can't really do as much with the razor if you want to try to change the angle, change the approach, because maybe you, uh, want a little more aggressive shave or you know something like that you just can't do it really with this razor uh, the other con is that it just has a little bit different feel because of this flat surface you're moving across your skin it ha it's a little bit more synthetic um I, I could say that maybe it doesn't have as much soul you know but I, that's me kind of being being picky some have described it as kind of boring feeling, and I can see where that's coming from. But I tell you what, if this is a razor that I had on some kind of desert island, I would I would enjoy my shaves, you know. And uh, I am I don't really like like light razors where you have to pull them through the hair, and they have added enough thickness here in the handle and maybe in the head as well. To give it, it seems like it has more weight than a, an aluminum razor I tried years ago. And so I like that. I like that a lot. Love the shape of this handle. Gets a little bit bigger. It's tapered. Gets a little bit bigger to the end here. They put a little bit of texturing. Even if your hands are soapy, you have a pretty good grip on the blade, uh, on the razor. Uh, because of the, the conical shape, if it's upside down, it's just not going to fall out because of the angles and stuff. And uh, I, I just really, really like this handle shape. Uh, honestly, if I knew some kind of fabricator, and uh, I, I would think about sending them this and say, hey, make this for me in stainless steel. I honestly, you know, uh, would consider doing that. Let's get a good rinse. Now, I think that was a third pass, and I've still got tons of lather. So that 12 seconds, it was still too much in a sense. Now, lather's cheap because it didn't really take much product uh, to make this. I usually use 0.4 grams of sterling per shave and I still end up with more lather than I need. So if I dump all this out, it's, it's no big deal. I'm just going to do a touch up. This could be the third pass, but it might also be the fourth. I'm not quite sure. So, um, I have gotten a close shave here. The Kai it is a blade that does sometimes become tricky. 
in other razors. But this one tames it. And Buzz probably knows that I, and he may do this too, um, I love to stick a good sharp blade, like a feather, or a nasset, or maybe a kai, in a mild razor like a, a tech. Because the, the, the mildness of the razor tempers the sharpness of the blade, and it's almost like putting a, a good sword in a ninja's hands, somebody who knows how to use it. And you end up with just a terrific shave, both close and comfortable. The first time I used this, it was a little unnatural. Um, I mean, and when I say that, I really should have said it took a little bit of getting used to in terms of the angles because it really only has one angle to use. Um, and I found myself adjusting, but this time it was thoughtless. It's almost like my body, my brain adjusted to it automatically after just one shave. And that might be the way, you know, other people work as well. Yeah, that's a nice close shave. No irritation at all. Really happy with that. The 16 milliliters of water is what I used. 12 seconds of loading. The agar, oh. See, instead of unscented, if I ever had some kind of allergy or something, uh, a scent like this might be what I would go for just all the time because it's it's kind of not there if you don't want it to be at this point. Let's uh, get a good rinse and then put on that splash. And here's what the brush looks like right after the shave. All clumpy and stuff. You can see the backbone, how it doesn't spring back. It's still very stiff kind of here at the bottom half of the bristles because of just all the bristle congestion. There's just so much there. But you can see the way the tips there can move around. I'll towel strop it. And then we can see it being a little different after the towel stropping. Still has that same pliability, but you can start to see it. things are drying up and separating a little bit more. And now we will hair dry it. And here we have it now after hair drying. You can just kind of almost see the softness as you might compare it to how it, it, uh, these kind of brushes are in the beginning because the tips have split and so it gives it a softer look as well as of course a softer feel. And just lots of splits going on. Still got a good many to go, especially in the, in the core here. I think since I've been switching to cool and a high speed, I think I've actually seen the, the level of splitting kind of slow down a little bit. And so I think maybe the warm temperature and the low speed might be a little better, you know, uh, at, at speeding up the process. But that may also mean the other one is safer. I don't know. I need to talk to SpongeBob about that, see if he's tried that out. So uh, one nice thing about the little break there with the hair dryer is it gives my skin a little bit of time to recover because often Sterling Maybe they just have a lot of alcohol or something uh, in their splashes, and so they can give me a little bit of irritation. Yeah, looking forward to this agar here. A little bit of stinging, but not very much. It's all gone now. So obviously over here, there must have been some little, almost unexperienced uh, razor burn. You know, just very minor, something that you pick up with an alcohol product, but you may never feel it otherwise. That's fine. Oh, oh, now that's interesting. The splash, the liquids always give a better impression of a scent than the soaps do. There's With the soap, there's just too much to get in the way. Too much holding the scent back, that sort of thing. Other scents coming into play that get in the way as well. But with a splash and with, of course, the cologne, you're looking at the more true part of the scent. And there's some pepperiness and, and a spice in there, in addition, that I, I don't smell with the soap. It'll be fun to watch that change and see what uh, it's called uh, drying down. There'll be some top notes. Sometimes the flowery stuff and the fruity stuff will, will be gone after you've had something on your skin for a while, and then those bottom notes are what remain. It's neat to watch things change. And I believe that's it. Wow, I really enjoy the agar so much. Thank you, Buzz. We'll see you again next time, everyone. 
and uh, what a wonderful shave today. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Good night.